Hey, Crime Stoppers. Let's talk about, um, again, kind of taking it from Tuesday and yesterday, yesterday being Thursday. Let's take a look at other language that we might find. Because when I see things like in the marketing speak, they talk about high conviction trades. And I think whoever's using that, it's a bullshit term. High conviction trade. You know, even if you're at my level, your conviction, anytime you're going to add risk, your, your conviction should be the same. And you, you should be expressing your edge. Otherwise, there's no trade. I guess what I'm getting at is, and I've mentioned this, uh, I think, before, is that conviction, if you're using that expression, means bias. Right? Because none of us can predict the future. And until you're perfectly honed with who you are and what you're doing and why you do what you do, to speak, you don't know what conviction means, basically. Sorry to say it that way. But conviction is a bias, and you can find yourself into wishing and getting into situations that you otherwise have no business being in. I'll know, I know people use that, but it's too, you know, you have conviction in yourself and in your behavior for sure. But the list that you're putting together is completely discretionary, right? When they talk about, you know, your, 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 your watch list. Now, if you're doing systematic trading, you don't have this problem because you have forced objectivity. You're screening the data for criteria and the computer doesn't let anything slip through the cracks. You know? And so I would like you to focus on your own behavior and on your ability to execute, that's where you should have conviction, trust, faith in yourself, another, you know, synonyms. But to say that you have a high conviction trade, you know, they should all, all the trades that you put on should have the same level of um, importance, I guess is the word. And if all the criteria aren't there, there aren't stages or staggering levels of why you should put a trade on. There's one set of rules. So therefore, every trade that you put on should be the same conviction, so much so that you don't even need the word anymore because all the objective criteria are there. You know, if you're, if you're new and you're starting out and you're saying, well, I need this criteria for this type of a trade and this criteria for this kind of a trade, again, I think you're putting yourself in a tough spot to try to be a different person almost on every trade. There are people out there for sure who have many, many years of experience that could learn to do things one way and then add upon that. Once they've gotten a certain type of ethos down, you're looking at one but I didn't start that way. In fact, I had to oversimplify things because everything I thought I knew what I was doing when I went to Wall Street was completely wrong, like everything. So once you figure out one thing, then yes, you can come back and figure out a second. But to try to figure out four different things and have different levels of conviction, fuck are you talking about? <laughs> you know? So so you have to be careful. I know that there are there are you know, people out there selling services and marketing and they choose their words deliberately because who, who, for those of you who are at home feeling insecure about yourself, who wouldn't want to be a high conviction type of person? But that's what I'm trying to say. You have to have conviction in your own behavior. The list is discretionary. If you add risk, it's because you have an edge. You can't have varying degrees of conviction. There's either risk on or there's risk off. And each instrument that you put on, whatever it is that you're trading, if you're going to add risk, long or short, there's no varying degrees of conviction. Other, why would you be wishy-washy or at a low end of conviction and still want to put a trade on? Remember, there's two different payoffs for the trade. There's the financial payoff then there's the spiritual, the psychological, the emotional payoff. What are you doing it for? You probably have a balance of both. 
But if you're risking money, then you absolutely have to get a rate of return and have an ability to make money. Otherwise, you're just being a philanthropist and you might as well steer your money to a cause that you believe in other than some other trader's account. You know what I mean? So I spend a lot of time thinking about this because I want to remove as much bias from my own behavior as I possibly can. Because typically when you get into using that type of language, it's because you're trying to solve an emotional issue with your trading, not necessarily a financial one. Even though when you say conviction, the ruse is that it is a financial win. But I find when I really look at the word, it's used for psychological reasons. So look at that in your own behavior and, and look at the words that you find yourself using because they, be, they can be carrying a key to your subconscious that you might be able to use to study yourself and study your behavior and improve. And improving might be simplifying your process. It might mean putting on fewer trades that have higher, you know, or finding rules that have higher expected value. And ultimately, you would focus on, you know, in, in, in that language, only the highest conviction trades. There aren't any others, especially if you're starting out. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense to, you know, if, you're, if your R is 1 and you're looking to make, and your rules make you 3, 4, 5 R, you know, when you win, it, it wouldn't make sense, knowing how random this works, to put on a suboptimal trade i.e. lower conviction trade. If the criteria that you need aren't there, 100% of it to me, then there's no trade. And at earlier in your career, you don't want to start changing your bet size. You want to stay consistent because if you're doing things on a discretionary basis, it's very difficult to track your behavior if you're all over the place. If you're changing instruments and then changing bet sizes, it becomes too much. You become a Jekyll and Hyde. And to me, when you're starting out, or if you're just starting out, even if you've got three, four, five years experience, to me, you're going to get much better results if you can focus on doing one thing and being one person. Later in your career, you want to add to stuff, that's great. But until you know for sure, because you've got the evidence that you're onto something, trying to be it's like trying to be a people pleaser. You're trying to be everything to everybody as opposed to just being yourself. So I would, I would say get rid of using those words that have enormous amounts of bias because it could, like I said, be a key or, or, or a foray to your understanding how your psychology works in and around you know, how you manage risk and how also you develop your craft. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. I appreciate you all being here. It's been a good week. Please like and subscribe, and uh, have a great weekend. I'll see you Monday. Okay, everybody, thanks for being here. Please take a minute, like, and subscribe to the show. You could also leave a comment. I don't have all the answers, so it's good to get some feedback. Also, if you would like to support the show, check out the links below. You can get the free audiobook of The Inner Voice of Trading uh, and also information about the course that I teach with Victor Spirandio. Thanks for being here, folks. I'll see you tomorrow.